Pastor Lord, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm coming to you live. It's a pleasure one more time to be with you all. Um, thank God for today. Um, being thankful for this moment and this hour and just giving God thanks. Um, it's a pleasure that we are still in the land of the living you know and God been gracious to us and merciful to us and so many times we don't be thankful unto the Lord but until you actually sit down and remember the goodness of God you know every one of us like when folks preach and make us shout and jump and but I believe that this is the time when we need to take out some time to be thankful to the Lord and not only to be thankful to the Lord but just spend some time in the present of God and actually sometimes we just need a God moment because many times we caught up in this world and the, the fame of the world and the stuff of the world and, and it's all good but every now and then you need a God moment a God you you must take out time to seek the face of God God bless you take out time to pray take out time to hear what God is really saying because God is always speaking I don't know if man is always listening but God is always speaking he's a merciful God and a gracious God and today I just want to give God thanks for all the blessing that he store up on me not for house not for land not for car not for none of those stuff but that I wake up this morning and that I have life and that the grace of God and his mercy have kept me and, and, and thank God for for just giving me my feet to walk and my hands to clap and my mouth to speak and uh, thank God that I can help myself because it's the grace of God that I'm still in the land of the living and every now and then I believe that we just need to sit down and give God thanks for the stuff that God give to us like food and our table and shoes and our feet and clothes and our back because I find out when there is a conspiracy actually there is a lot of folks like to show it up when there is a conspiracy or there is confusion a lot of folks like to listen to the negative moment and the negative stuff in life and folks follow the negative more than the positive and God is a God of the positive though God speak judgment to a nation God is always merciful and many times we are quick to follow uh, a topic that uh, look excited and, and sometimes the topic can talk about something that not edifying the body of Christ not doing nothing in the body of Christ but folks like this I think folks like uh, rumor they like stuff that that bring confusion and many times what we need to do is get into the present of God a few days ago I was just sitting down and you know I try to close out everything out of my mind because I'm trying to talk to God and when I'm trying to talk to God the devil always puts stuff in your mind for you to think about it at the same time you will always have a thought but God know your thought from far off that means God know everything that you go in to think about but the enemy is always showing a thought in your mind yeah, anytime you get into the Bible why a lot of you can not unlock the secret of God or the revelation of God is because every time you go to read there is a next spirit speaking to you there is something that 
come into your mind. You got to get into a place with God where you actually close out everything that is negative, everything that is trying to take over your mind that is not of God and you got to put it aside and say this time is God time and this space is God's space and I'm going to spend some time with God and every other little problem that I got I'm going to put them on the side and when I finish spending some time with God I'm going to take up those problems or think about those problems but right now I'm putting these problems to the side and I'm going to listen to God because the enemy wants you to be so uh, confused he always sending something in your mind that is not of God you know God wants to do something great in all of your life God want to do the magnificent in your life he want to give you a breakthrough he want to open door for you God want to unlock stuff for you in the spirit realm but many times we are too busy spending time with something else when we need to spend time in the present of God. So many things is taking up the time of God and we have no time for God no more but we have time for everything else. We have time to know about everything that's going on in the world. Many of us don't know our, who is the vice president in our state. Many of us don't even know uh, who is the third president of America but I ask, I can ask anybody right now what's the latest TV show what's what's the latest a uh, TV show they going to know it why because folks want us uh, want to keep up with the negative stuff in the world TV show they they don't care they don't the the real stuff that they need in their life they ain't taking out no time to seek God and to know what God want to do in their life why so many folks always calling you to 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 pray for them and, and Ain't nothing wrong with praying for you, but what about you spend some time in the presence of God? What about you cry out to God? What about you? You 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 actually let God be in control of your life because God is not in control of your life. Some of your relationship is actually uh, your relationship with Facebook is more than the relationship that you got with God. The relationship with Instagram is more than what you got with God. The relationship that you got with your phone is a better relationship than you got with God. Some folks spend so much time on their phone but no time in the presence of God. So much time on Facebook but no time in the presence of God. Why don't you think that's why you ain't getting a breakthrough? Because your breakthrough don't come through Facebook, your breakthrough come through God. Yes, God can use somebody to speak through Facebook that can give you a breakthrough, but I want to tell you, if you need a breakthrough, you will have to seek God because God has the key to open the door and to close the door. That's why I'm not in all of this thing now where everybody want to be your friend and you want to you wanna keep up with everything in the world. You can keep up with the world. Jesus said if you keep your mind and me I keep you in perfect peace. Why many of you don't have peace is because you don't keep your mind in Jesus. You keep your mind and everything else but God. But God, you keep your mind and your money and your house and your land and your children. But God, what about you put your mind where God wants your mind to be? Because God created man to have a relationship with him. When man disobeyed God in Genesis, we find out that man was separated from God. Man did not have no relationship with God because they disobeyed obey God. Now Jesus came to reconcile us back to God through, uh, through his grace and his mercy where he shed his blood on the cross at Calvary that we can be reconciled back to God. But I find out for you to get back 
into the present you gotta go through Christ and for you to go through to, to get into Christ you gotta go through some stuff and what I find out that folks don't want to go through nothing yes they just want everything to be good I roller skating up and down and I'm riding and everything gonna be good and I don't need to pray but you are the one that gotta pray I don't have to pray listen you are a benefit you don't understand God is the one that I need in my life that means the Bible said what I pray in public yes that's a public prayer is actually a public show but you cannot have a public prayer without you have a, a, a secret prayer life so many folks why they act like they can pray but actually they don't have a prayer closet with God so they don't pray in their prayer closet with God but when they come in the platform they want to pray mighty they want to preach mighty they want to evangelize mighty they want to speak mighty and the Bible said the letter without the spirit uh, is no power in the letter that's simple let me know ladies and gentlemen if you don't have the Holy Ghost manifest in you or the Spirit of God is being manifest in you I don't care how much you speak this word you just got the letter you got the letter the letter can't do nothing alone the, without the letter mixed with faith and the only thing that can give you faith is the Spirit of God so you won't have faith without the spirit cause faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God not just the letter and some of us just got the letter we are a great preacher of the letter great apostle of the letter great prophet of the letter but I have no spirit and that's why nobody can be delivered and that's why everybody been calling you to pray for them when you got the spirit of God because they pastor only got the letter so they are not connected with God and God is saying I need a nation that's going to come back to me and when I read the book of Revelation last night it got to let us know that God meet John in the Isle of Patmos but when God meet John in the Isle of Patmos the church believed that it was good there was comfortable and God got to send John to write a letter to the church and tell some of the church that they are sitting in a place with the, the synagogue with the devil some of them are lukewarm some of them God said they are rich but they are wretched God was correcting the church because the true John the prophet because the church believed that they got God but they leave their first love and so many of us today have leave our first love and still believe that we got God that's why we don't have no prayer meeting no more that's why we don't pray no more that's why we don't call in God no more because we just come to church and get religious and no spirit and let me tell you no religion can set you free the Bible said who the son set free is free indeed and you only can be free by the spirit not by your religion not by your hypocrisy the only way you're going to be saved is if you walk in the spirit because the Bible said those that walk in the spirit they will not fulfill the lust of the flesh what we got now is too much fleshy preacher too much fleshy fleshy apostle too much fleshy bishop and God is saying get that flesh on the subjection and let me in control let me manifest because folks don't like when you talk radical they said oh use a preacher that can them use a preacher that judge in them use a preacher that have no love use a mean preacher let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen the Bible said that those that walk in the spirit they are the son of God so if you walk not in the spirit you ain't gonna be no son you I don't care how much you can preach I don't care how much you can prophesy because let me tell you something prophecy is a gift preaching is a gift apostle oh yes is a gift every one of us got a gift 
I, as a preacher, have a gift. But let me tell you something what a gift cannot do. Oh, yes. A gift cannot deliver you. A gift can preach to you, but it don't have the ability to deliver you. The Bible said the anointing of God, it shall break the yoke. The only time you're going to be delivered is when the Holy Ghost anoints you. Because a lot of us got the gift of God, but no anointing flowing through our pulse and through our body. So you cannot deliver somebody until the anointing of God start to flow. All of us can preach. And God is saying, it's not every. God anoints some of us to do different things in the body of Christ. All of us didn't call to be a preacher. I'm being real. All of us didn't call to be an apostle. And surely all of us didn't call to be a prophet. And I, I don't get it, but folks nowadays... They take up their robe and put on their robe and because they can speak a few words and, and, and they are very intelligent, they believe that they are a preacher. And listen to me, all of us can preach. I'm not saying you must not preach. But when you get up and said, I'm going to be a, a preacher and did a call by God, the church is in problem. Oh, yes. The church is in problem because people are preaching, but God have not sent them. Oh, yes. So they are preach, but they have not been sent. And folks that have not been sent, they will always say stuff for you to make you feel comfortable. Oh yes, I'm tired now, but preacher, that actually, you know, some folks love money more than all they love God. They just love money. They just love money more than how they love God. They, they just love to be on the platform and is a show, is a showdown, is a show off. Ain't nothing about God kingdom. Listen what the Bible said. And we gonna read for a little bit and I won't be too long with you. Hallelujah. Okay. We're going to read. Read Acts chapter 9 and verse 2. And desire of him a letter to Damascus to the synagogue that he may find any this way. Whether they were man or woman. Hallelujah. He might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Who is that? Paul. Paul, if he find anybody this way, what it mean by this way? This way was Christ was the way. Oh yes. Anybody that call in Jesus, that's the way. If there was women, bring them bound to jail. If there was men, bring them bound to jail. But the Bible said why Paul, actually his name was Saul, get it right, his name was Saul, was journey and the road to Damascus. And I know I preach this over and over. And as he journey. He came near to Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Oh yes. This light 
was the light of the world and what it was shining in dark places oh yes why Saul was in darkness he was in sin oh yes he know the law but he know not God hallelujah yes Lord he was in darkness heading down to a road that is going to lead him to the marvelous light glory be to God the Bible said there a light from heaven shine from heaven and he fell and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me God is talking to Saul God is talking to Saul he said Saul Saul why have thou persecute me when the last time God talked to you and he said who are thou Lord and the Lord said I am Jesus who thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the perk oh yes it's hard for you to kick against the savior the stone the chief cornerstone it's hard for you to kick against your creator was telling Saul you are trying to kick against the prick but he ain't working and listen what happened oh yes and he trembling and astonished he was astonished why said Lord what will thou have me to do when the last time he asked God what will he have you to do because some of us is just doing our thing we ask in God nothing what will thou have me to do oh yes where do you want me to preach who need help God who do you want me to bless who do you want me to give something to when is the last time you ask God that when is the last time you ask God who where do you want you to preach where do you want you to go when is the last time arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do God told him arise go into the city God is going to tell him what to do right now you better ask God what must I do to be saved if you're not saved and I will tell you what you can do to be saved not only that you must ask God what is your purpose and what God called you to do oh yes as many of us it's going back in front back and throw back and throw don't know what we was called for don't know what God called us to do don't know what our calling is you gotta know many of us is trying to be preacher in America but God can call you to go to a different nation to preach many folks probably won't even accept you you're preaching in America because America the people got itchy ears oh yes they don't like to hear truth. I, I don't care who get mad, but it's the truth. They got itchy ears. Itchy ears. If you follow, I'm going to be real. If you follow this religion in America and follow folks how they live in this country, we got to be real. You become a backslider simple mean that many folks that was saved is not saved no more many folks that was righteous and holy ain't holy no more 
Many folks get married to a sinner man and the sinner man tell you you got to wear makeup. You start putting on makeup and lipstick and all of these stuff. Come on. You know righteousness from unrighteousness. You know holiness from unholiness. You know a godly lifestyle from ungodly lifestyle. And so the religious system that we are really under, and I'm going to get back to Paul in a bit, little bit. The religious system that we are really under, ladies and gentlemen, is not trying to lift us up to God's standard. It actually is trying to lower the standard of God. And let me tell you, God has a standard. And so, in the religious system, folks believe that they can do anything that they want to do. So what they do, they take off their garment of holiness and godliness and they put on a garment of religion. And so what the religion garment said, who is you to judge me? Who is you to tell me how to live? Who is you to tell me how to walk? Who is you to tell me what? I must rear and how I must look because they take on the religious garment and they take off the garment of righteousness oh yes the garment of righteousness will actually tell you you can't live like that but because folks want to lower the standard of God they put on the garment of religion and take off the spiritual garment. Oh yes. You know what religion garment do? Religion garment. Will actually. Make you live. Presumptuously. You know what that means? You keep on doing the same thing over and over and over again. But when you put on the garment of righteousness. That is the garment of Christ. You gotta be a new man. God. How can we say that we are saved but ain't nothing change about us? We are like the world. We act like the world. We look like the world. And we talk like the world. I ain't talking tonight. I'm telling you. We ain't saved yet. We got to come back to God in holiness and godliness. When is the last time you're broken? When is the last time you cry? When is the last time you said, God, I'm sorry. You know, God, I'm not even living right, but I want to live right. God, I did some presumptuous stuff in your sight and I, I done some disobedient stuff, but forgive me for my disobedient. Folks don't say that no more. Folks are too proud now. Folks is very too they are too intellect now. They they believe that because they are so educated that they don't need God. Oh yes. And God is saying we need to get back to holiness. And to righteousness. Glory be to God. He said there is a few in Saudis that did not define their garment. You know folks don't like righteous preacher. Folks like preacher that tell them to run around the church, clap their hands, live any kind of way. Folks don't like when you talk about holiness. And the only way somebody actually can talk about holiness because holiness really is coming from God. So if you've got a connection with God, I'm not saying we don't make mistakes, you will try to live holy. Glory be to God. And sometimes I messed up. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I fall. But I don't stay there. 
I can't stay there. The Bible said, Now you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Say, if you are a new creature, why are you acting like you are the same creature? When Jesus said, I make you a new creation in me. So why are you still drinking? Why are you still listening to the Rolian show? Oh, yes. Why are you still in Beyonce and Jay-Z and Lady Gaga? Why are you still listening to them? Glory be to God. And Rihanna, why are you still listening to them? Why are you still listening to the world? If the world don't supposed to be in you, but you supposed to be in the world, but you must not be of the world. Why are you still listening to them? And I find out that folks that listen to these people, they these people will actually carry you away from holiness and righteousness so I tell you somebody said I'm going to marry to a sinner and I'm going to try to change that sinner no 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 that sinner is going to change you you can't change no sinner that sinner is going to change you and righteousness is going to rub off and holiness and holiness is going to leave because holiness don't like unrighteousness. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you. Jesus said you are the light. Say, so if you are the light, why, why are you in darkness? Saul was in darkness until he met Jesus on the road of Damascus. We can't keep on doing church. Huh? We can't keep on playing church. Why some of you married six, seven times? Why? Come on, somebody. You, some of you, don't have no love for your husband and for your wife. God, what are you saying, God? God wants us to get back to a place where you know the preacher won't preach a judgmental message if you're living right why would God send me to preach a judgmental message if you're living right why would God tell me to tell you to live holy if you're already living holy he's not the art of confusion say if you are living holy and I'm coming to you preaching every day and telling you live holy that mean I'm not hearing from God I'm preaching out of myself I'm probably preaching out of myself flesh but the church of the living God must be the church church don't just like church sister don't supposed to be look like a stripper come on talk the truth be real we don't, I'm closing my Bible. I get to that the next time. We don't supposed to look. A sister don't supposed to look like a stripper. A church sister don't supposed to have a lusty spirit. Come on, somebody. If you got a lusty spirit, that actually let me know you ain't saved. A church brother don't supposed to go around church messing with every sister. You ain't safe. And some folks believe that God don't see their heart. You know what happened? We don't kill Delilah. We don't kill Jezebel. We bring them in the church and let them grow. And become a giant. I'm not saying that you must kill somebody. I'm saying if you see that spirit, kill that spirit because that spirit is actually going to pollute your organization or whatever group you are in. So many 
folks are in the camp that ain't choosing to kill the spirit that is killing them. God actually want us to kill whatever is going to kill us. And it's not odd. It's not difficult. A broken heart. Folks don't like holiness. Preacher just come and preach the good part of the Bible and tell you that you're going to bless and be prosperous and God going to give you a million dollars and yeah, you're going to be good and you shack up with your boyfriend. You still live with your boyfriend. You still live with your girlfriend. You still live with your sugar daddy. And you still believe that I'm going to heaven. And so, now the church, we must have insight, and foresight, that we can see what's going on in the body of Christ. We, we can not keep living a lifestyle, and many times what we do, we lock Jesus out, the church. The Bible said in Revelation, Behold, Jesus is knocking on the door. You know, you are the church. And so when you close your heart and decided that you won't open your heart to God and decided that you won't let God come in and fill the broken part, what you're doing, you're closing the door. And you won't let him in. And why you won't let him in is because you got somebody inside already. Or something that inside. So if you let God in, anything that in you will have to come out of you before God can come and abide in you. So every time, if you got a lust problem, the problem is for God to come in and fill that place, you actually got to let go and let God. If you got a, a adultery problem, you, you got to let go and let God. What you're saying, I'm giving it up and God is going to take over my heart. But many times we love it so much that we are not willing to let it go. So many times we are not willing to let go the things that are trying to bring us down. Let go the man, let go the woman, let go the lust of this world, let go perversion, let it go and let God. How many of you are holding on to the little that you have when God want to give you more? You believe this is the best man, the best woman, the best wife, the best lady. And actually, it's not true sometimes. And so, we choose to hold on to these stuff. And choose not to let go. But there is a other side to the story as I was talking about that because this morning when I was praying God showed me that there are some folks that are willing to let go but there is also a spirit of witchcraft in the midst. So every time they are trying to let go. There are something that is called soul tie that somebody have tied that person to them. There are so much stuff. You, you, you got to understand that, ladies and gentlemen, that somebody right now that is listening to me right now. Some of you want to come out of a relationship, but you can't. 
You try to leave, but something got a hole in you. You try to go back, but something got a hole in you. You try to step out, but something got a hole in you. And so, many times, when you're trying to get out of a relationship, and you find out that every time you make a step, there is something pulling you back, it actually can be witchcraft. It actually can be somebody don't want you to go, so the spirit of witchcraft been sent against you. Some of you are in abusive, abuse, abusive relationship. And you want to leave, but you can't. That's witchcraft. It's not fear. It's witchcraft. Some of you is on a job trying to leave, but you can't leave. Some of that is witchcraft too. So, what you got to learn, the only time you break those, I call them giant, is true prior and fasting. Because life is totally spiritually and humanity. So you got to understand that it's too rem. And so the spirit rem actually have more influence over you than the physical realm. Many folks believe that I'm because I'm walking in the flesh that the spiritual realm don't have no power over them. But everything that you are doing actually is connected to a spiritual spirit. That means everything that you are doing. Some folks believe that they are caught up in adultery, caught up in lust, caught up in lying. That's the spirit. Caught up in stealing. That's the spirit. Caught up in pornographic and all these stuff. That's, that's the spirit. Caught up in sex. That's, that's the spirit. Yeah, we all desire that sometime. But it also can be a spirit. Because God created man and woman, yes, we understand that. To multiply, replenish the earth, we totally understand that. And I believe it's good for you to have a mate, but many times you have the power to subdue your flesh and put it on a subjection. Because if you don't put your flesh on the subjection, your flesh is going to put you on the subjection. You don't get it, right? That means the flesh is going to manifest over you. So we all was created in the image and likeness of God. And God give us dominion over the earth realm and over the spiritual world. We got power over it. So it's either we speak to our situation or we can let the devil drive you crazy. Because let me tell you, if you are a man and a woman of God, every one of you must know God for yourself. Because some of us have peace with God, some of us have peace in God, and some of us have the peace of God. Peace with God come through Christ Jesus, through grace. And peace through God is by we accepting Jesus and we justify in, G in Christ Jesus to get to God. But listen, the peace of God is actually mean that when you take your mind off everything else and place your mind in the word of God, you get the peace of God. Jesus said the peace that I leave with you is, a, is not the peace of this world. 
but a peace that passes all understanding, unsearchable, a peace that is invisible, a peace that you can't see, you can't touch, but it's a peace that passes all understanding. And so Jesus said, I give you peace. And I want to tell you, all of us as a child of God, we have peace. It's either we choose to live in the peace of God, or we choose to live in our thoughts and the negative mindset. Because the only way you can get peace is when you, you actually have a transition from the physical realm, our humanity, and get peace the power of divinity and let divine the divine God control your life you can't have peace without God reigning over you because you got to understand if you don't have peace you're going to have sorrow and happiness and what the devil come to do he come actually to bring confusion so to confuse you from having peace. Once you start to line up your mind with the word of God. And yourself with the word of God. You will understand that you have peace. But once you keep on busy body. Looking at everything. Uh, chasing the world. Watching everything that's going on in the world. Try to keep up with everything. Try to keep up with the Jones. Try to keep up with everything that's going in the world. You will never have peace. Because peace come out of the word of God. If you want to have peace. You must meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. The Bible said, uh, um, if you want to be prosperous, and if you want to be blessed, if you want to be more than a conqueror, the only way you're going to have peace and be more than a conqueror is when you meditate in the word of God. You want to see somebody defeated? You want to see Christian that have no power? You want to see a Christian that is really defeated? It's those persons that have no time for God. Or no time to spend with God. Because if you have no time for God, that, that actually telling you you're already defeated. Because victory don't come through you, it comes through Jesus to you. So for you to be victorious... It's only Jesus Christ that can make you victorious. Victory don't come because you get a degree. Victory don't come because you got some money. Victory come to Christ Jesus. Every time you get up, you must be in light by the word of God. The word of God must be your daily bread. It must be your substance. It must be your life. How many today are weak and weary, burned down, sick? Because they have no time to pray. You know, I want to tell you something. Whatever you are facing right now, the obstacle is uh, the uh, the opposition is not actually big. It's a small thing that you are facing, but it become big when you have no time for God, because the enemy show you. The stumbling block every day that you got to face. And so many of us take time to look at the stumbling block that is the image that the devil is showing us. But nobody take time to look at the word of God. Because the word of God is life to you. And your daily bread. 
I want to say something and I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go back to, I was still talking about Paul, but I'm going I'm to actually go to chapter 16, all right? And verse 25. And listen what it said. Now this man was preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Called by Jesus Christ. Anointed and sent forth to preach the gospel. But while they was preaching the gospel. We understand that there is some conspiracy. And some adversary that came up against them. So we understand that they've been persecuted for righteousness sake and for the gospel. And so the Bible said that um, and, at, and, and at midnight, hallelujah, Paul and Silas pray, yes Lord, and sing Praise unto God. And the prisoner heard them. Yes, Lord. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the door were open. And everyone that were banned were loose. So now these men get in problem. But because these men have a divine connection with God, they have confident that they are in a situation and the only person can deliver them is the God of Revelation. So while they was in jail, they choose not to complain. But they choose to pray and praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, if these men was in jail and they could praise God in the midst of jail house, or in the midst of their place where they bind them they still have hope in God what about you that is free don't you believe if you praise God suddenly there will be a breakthrough don't you believe if you lift up God suddenly there will be deliverance because midnight Paul and Silas pray and praise God and suddenly there was a shooking. And so whatever you are facing tonight, don't wait until the prophet showed up or the preacher showed up or the apostle showed up. Praise him. Suddenly there will be a virtue for you. You can either choose to sit down in jail and wait for the angel to come and loose you and that probably be four day five day six day and actually that probably be no time at all that means the angel won't come because God is a God that react by faith so until you do something that move God, God don't move. <laughs> so if you sit down, you remember these two men that was leprosy, I think it was like. And they said, if we sit here, we going to die. I think it was two or three of them. Yeah. But if we go to the Syrian camp. We might die anyway, but we going, going to die trying. So they believe God. Suddenly God make a noise and the Syrian army, they 
they get fearful and scatter God don't do nothing until you do a faith walk or faith move you think God would have actually come to deliver Daniel if Daniel didn't make a faith stand and said O oh king I'm still going to pray you think God would have delivered Shadrach and Meshach and if they didn't make a faith stand no God wouldn't until man understand that God don't react or God don't move until you make a faith stand you know many folks are saying I'm sitting and I'm waiting on God it's going to be done God is going to do it listen nothing go like that nothing go like that listen when God make your promise the promise got to come to pass and when God make your promise somebody shouldn't have to tell you that God make your promise they should actually give you a confirmation or you should receive a confirmation that God make your promise so if somebody tell me something is something that my spirit supposed to be a witness already that God is going to do in my life so when God make you a promise God promise cannot lie you don't actually got to go and get the promise the promise will come to you because God make you a promise the problem is when God make your promise sometime though he make your promise is waiting for you to make a step because God want to react by your faith if, if you don't make a move in your life you just gonna stay there and die and many folks are saying I need a job I need a car go to the car place and claim it <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. you know, why? Go to the. He is a son of God. Why are you doubting God? I need a new house. Go claim it. You don't have no good credit, but claim it. I need a man. Claim it. You need a wife. Claim it. Stop sitting down and believe that you're powerless. Because actually, the church make you believe sometimes not every church but some church that you are powerless and whatever you decree in the earth realm it shall be established it may not be established tomorrow but it will be established I decree something and I saw it came to pass already you know I believe that whatever you believe God for once you speak it out of your mouth the power is in the tongue, life and death. If you speak it out of your mouth, it's already released in the atmosphere. And once it's released in the atmosphere, it's taught to actually spread in the atmosphere. The enemy can't stop your words because whatever you speak in the atmosphere, you just waiting for God to catch that word and release it back into your life so if you speak something into the atmosphere five years ago and you still don't see it come to pass that word is actually in the heaven realm spinning until God see that is the right season and time God send the blessing with that word Folks speak stuff over their life and don't believe it. When I speak something, I believe it. I believe that anything that I speak, maybe I don't see it now, but in the next 10 years it's coming to pass. In the next 2 years it's coming to pass. In the next 3 years, whatever I speak in the heaven realm, I believe that it's coming to pass. So many times, we speak stuff and because it don't come to pass right away we get 
we start off and believe. Your word is actually germinate in the atmosphere right now. And what it's doing is spreading. It is waiting for the right season. Somebody's saying, it's my season now. Your season is when God tells you it's your season. And that you want to know when is your season? I'm going to show you when is your season. Your season is when you feel the anointing of God flowing through your system. That's your season. Until you feel the anointing of God flowing is not your season. Because once the anointing of God is up in you, your breakthrough is there. Folks don't understand the spirit realm. And I, I'm not telling you I understand everything about the spirit realm. But I know for you to get a blessing, you got to fight. Not fighting for the blessing, you got to fight warfare. Because it's not that God ain't going to bless you. God have your blessing. Some of your blessing is in storage right now. Why? When God give it to you, you wasn't ready for it. He put it in storage. I'm going to give it back to you, but when you are ready. You know, many of us not ready. Because once you ain't living right, you want God can give you your blessing. You're going to mess it up. You got a man in your life that ain't doing nothing around the house. God ain't going to give you a blessing. With a man that is not ready for the blessing that God going to give you. He don't supposed to be blessed from your blessing because you go through hell. So God hold back our blessing sometime. Hold it back. And he's saying when you ready. When you say yes to my will, yes to my way, I will trust you and obey. He said this is the time for your blessing to be released. God have your blessing and storage. Why I can't get it? You don't ready yet. You got to understand. We got for a season in God system God actually a five season in due season if you fainted not you shall reap so if you fainted not you go in to reap why you think the devil is pressing you down so much why you think the devil is fighting you so much why you think you got so much haters when you don't have you you never done these people anything you don't done them no wrong you love everybody why you think you got so much folks don't like you because they know that your blessing is coming but if, if they can get you out before you do season and you know it's the devil, right? That is working behind the scene. Before you do season, you can miss your blessing. So you got to tell God, come at water, trouble water, fire. I'm tired, God. I'm weary sometimes. I don't feel like pray sometimes. I don't feel like go on. But you told me do season. I'm going to fight until my blessing come true. I know they don't like me, but I'm fighting. Because my due season is right around the corner. And so you got to look at the future. Many of us, I feel anointed. Many of us is looking at the present. Look at our situation. Look. Look. Is serving God and the devil is telling you you don't have nothing you walking upright but folks that ain't walking upright is blessed the devil is telling you when are you gonna give up when are you gonna walk out 
I got one word for the devil. Not never. In due season, I'm going to surrender everything to God. Not giving up. In due season. Because there is a due season is coming when God is going to bless you. Don't leave church. Don't walk out in God. Don't turn your back in God. Don't feel discouraged. Don't feel dismayed. Your due season is coming. Some folks like when I shout and yell, but not today. I'm telling you, your due season is coming. Get ready, because your due season is coming. Can you believe it? After... Jacob wrestled with the angel all night and said, Oh angel, I won't let go until you bless me. Right now I'm in a night season, that's what he said. But I want a due season blessing. And Jacob wrestled with that angel. Sometimes you gotta wrestle for your blessing. Wrestle. Wrestle for your blessing. You gotta fight for your blessing. Not physical fight, spiritual. You can't just sit back, relax. Nobody sit back and get nothing. Even in the secular world or the world out there, nobody just sit back and get nothing. You gotta get up. You gotta do something. And so today, I wanna encourage you. Get up. Do something. Some of you are anointed for real estate. Anointed to have a business. Some of you are anointed to teach. Some of you are anointed to do what you do. God anoint you in different places, in different areas. Some of you anointed to even treat your husband good. And your wife right some of you are anointed to take care of your children God anoint all men in different area so don't believe because you're not anointed to preach that you don't have anointing in you all of you got anointing in you just to do something else I bet you some of you can sing so good that make the angel cry in heaven and I bet you I can't sing. <laughs> I bet you some of you can teach so good. That make me sit down and listen. Because every one of us is called. For a different purpose. But we all is working. In the body of Christ. Some of you can cook so good. That maybe I will just start licking my finger. You know some some of you are anointed to do different things and don't let some don't you do something that you don't love I'm telling you don't you take up a job that you don't love don't you build a church if you don't love what you do because if you're in real estate and it's going good for you or if you have a business and it's going good for you, keep on doing what you do. That's what you love. Because once you go over to something that you don't love, you won't have no joy to do it. And so, do something that you love. Like me, I preach all the time. I love preaching. I love preaching and, and why I love preaching because I love tell people about God and I actually care about folks soul but not only that I understand that the greatest thing that you can do on earth is what you do for God with all nothing else gonna count but the problem is let me tell you preacher got a great gift if you don't remember in the Old Testament preacher evangelist minister 
in the Old Testament, whatever, you know, prophet, whatever, all of you preacher, you got, once you're called by God and evangelist, all of you got a great gift. All of us got a great gift, but preacher got a great gift. And why I said this is because nothing can actually stop a preacher, but a preacher can stop himself. Simple. Mean that if you're preaching and the mic go out, your gift won't go out. If you're preaching and the light go out, you still can preach. Because your gift won't go out. You know, when you look back in the Old Testament, and now we got instrument and piano and all of these organ, organ or whatever they call it. We got these instruments that we play. And when you look back in the Old Testament, they didn't have none of these things. But so many folks got saved. Why? The gift that God gave to man. You know, Peter, Peter did not have no piano on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost. Is what they depend on. Now we got this key where preacher, you know, they gotta play you to sing, they gotta play you to preach. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We 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 need the original Holy Ghost. Somebody don't supposed to play you to preach. You know, they got to give you a key, a lower C, and a lower B, or whatever you call it. But these things is good. I'm not saying they're not good. But you understand now that I look at some preacher, and I understand that actually if the mic that they're using to preach in the, sh in the church actually go off, they can't preach no more. That's bad. Because what you got to understand that no power is behind their preaching. And we, we must understand that the keyboard and the piano that make you sound so good when you're preaching. There come a day when you won't have no piano and no uh, uh, no keyboard and none of these stuff to bing bing and every time the preacher go home you go bing that won't be around so you gotta build up yourself in the holy faith of Jesus Christ and when you're preaching that you don't need no keyboard when you're singing you don't supposed to have keyboard you don't suppose piano these stuff is you, the anointing that's supposed to be in your life supposed to be the keyboard and the piano and all of this stuff it's supposed to flow through you glory be to God if we can just get to a place where we stop getting so much you know because it's good but now in society there's so much stuff ladies and gentlemen that is actually making the church go down and why I'm saying that because many preacher can preach without the piano and the keyboard you know if they don't press a button they can't preach no 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 I believe if your mic go out you're supposed to preach the word of God with power same way that a soul can be converted. In the old days, they didn't have all of these stuff. People come to God. So that let me know that these new, new society or new equipment that they have in this world is not actually working because what we need now, and I'm getting out of here, is the Holy Ghost power. To move in our life. We can't keep on using these little. You know some preacher come and preach. You got to wonder. When is the last time you see God? 
God, when is the last time you cry out to God? I'm not perfect. Pray for me, but we got to get real, man. We got to get real. We got to get real. We got to get back to God. We got to get back to holiness. We got to get power again. My God, these men in the Old Testament, they were so charged. In the New Testament, I mean, in the New Testament and the day of Pentecost, they were so charged. And even after Pentecost, they was charged. Nothing could stop them. They, they was burning with fire. Oh my God, but what happened to our church now? And, and these church now, what happened? Come on, these men was burning with fire. They showed up. They didn't call the Holy Ghost to come down all day. When they showed up, the Holy Ghost showed up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> these men did. A, you know, I mean, come on. These men didn't go back to Pentecost. You know, uh, some folks talking about I'm going back up to the upper room. What are you going back up there for? And the Bible said when they was up in the upper room, they was filled with the Holy Ghost. They came out with power. Many folks want to go back to the upper room. What? And there ain't nothing up in the upper room. Listen. Once you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is in you. So what you got to do is feed God that is in you by reading the Word of God and seeking God. Some folks talking about, I'm getting ready to go back to the upper room. You can go back to the upper room. Ain't nothing up there. There ain't no power up in the upper room. The power is in you. Is either you stir it up or you, you tell God to... Uh, flow, uh, overflow you with his anointing stop going back to the upper room many folks talking about ah, I'm going back to the upper room we're going to have upper room service come on come on come on the Holy Spirit is in you you don't need no upper room you need God you need to lay down before God and tell God to fill you up again uh, uh, the spirit that in you just need to recharge you know come on come on you don't got a phone with a battery in there and then you talk about I'm going to the store to buy a next one. Come on, that's joke. You just charge that thing up. And if you charge it up long enough, it's going to work. So I'm telling you, you got something in you that you just need to charge it up long enough. And it's going to work. Jesus love you. God bless you.